Hello YouTube, Jerry Kirkpatrick here, and we're on the downhill side of making a all-terrain generator. I'm sure everybody would like to have one, but uh, here is your template. So the next thing I've got to do is get the weight off of these pins here for the jack stands. I've put the wheels on. They're free. They're about a half inch above the what would be the ground. Uh, this is how it will be sitting on a regular basis uh, until the generator is needed. Then I can put the wheels on, move it to where it's going to be used, and then probably set it back up on the uh, the jack stands. If I know it's only going to be a day or so, I'll probably leave the wheels on. When the outage is over, I'll move it back over to the to the place where it's stored. So I was trying desperately to conceive of something that would be very intricate, uh, something that would take s some time to figure out the mechanism and then another short while to build it just to jack the generator up, maybe a uh, it would only have to be a sixteenth of an inch to take the weight off of this pin. But I remembered that I saw somewhere Irwin has these things and they can clamp this way or if you take this foot off, put it on the other end, then it, it can spread also. So I just happened to be in Ukiah yesterday, big, big city. Uh, it's more than twice as big as, as Willits here. They're so big that they have not only a Harbor Freight, but a Costco. Big deal. So, <clears throat> I went into Harbor Freight and they just happened to have basically the same thing. So I just took this foot. I noticed that this screw you can take out and change the foot from one end to the other. Now, normally this is turned the other way around so you can spread. But I wanted a flat bottom so when it's on the on the dirt actually when where this is going to be used it will have a flat bottom to rest on in this manner the other thing I noticed is that this foot can be removed easily and it leaves this notch right here. So by using a $7, well, maybe $8 with tax, $8 piece, I saved an hour, uh, no, a day of uh, messing around, designing and making something. So all I have to do with this is put it, I just took a 3 8 bolt put it through the hole where the axle was for the original wheels so I can just take this put that bolt right in the notch lower that and squeeze this just a <laughs> just that much and that relieves the weight off of this pin so I can pull it 
move it up, put the pin back in, and push this little button right here, and we're on the ground. So just that simple, I've cured the dilemma of how I was going to raise it enough to, to get this pin out. So let me do the same thing on the other side. Oddly enough, uh, this, this particular generator that I purchased has exactly the same thing on the other side except for all of the controls. So I can take the 3 8 bolt, slide it in where the axle goes, use this to raise it enough to relieve the pin, let it down, and then we will be on the wheels and the front landing gear. So let me get this done and we'll take a look at how we're going to move these fore and aft to change the weight on the handle. Uh, if you remember in the last video, I said I'm wanting between 20 and 30 pounds on the handle. By moving these pieces fore and aft is how I'm going to adjust that weight. So let me get this down. I'll get the scale set up and we'll see how we can get, well, around 30 pounds on the handle. So here we are with the generator sitting on the wheels at long last and the front landing gear are on the ground paper won't move from there and yes it is at a uh, slight attitude this way and that's all right because it will very seldom be used like this uh, only when I'm moving it from where it's going to be stored and ran once a month to the place where it will be used to put power to the house itself. So the way it's sitting right now is fine with me. The scale here is showing 15.80 pounds and that's with the jack stand and this adjustable jack here. There is no weight on the on the handle. The handle is not interfering with the uh, the scale at all. But if I take this away and then turn this Okay, paper slides in there. So we know all of the weight of the handle is on the scale here. And that is showing 28.20. zero. So we take uh, let's see, twenty-eight point two zero minus fifteen point eight zero. That only gives us twelve point four zero pounds. So with the axle. At this point, there's only four or 12.40 pounds on this. So you can see by that, this axle is going to have to be moved 
to the rear a bit. Um, I'm going to do it in increments of one inch. So I have here a piece of one inch square and a soapstone. So I'm going to hold the one inch up against this edge. Make a mark one inch back. And what it's going to take to move the axle going to have to take the weight off of the wheel, take it off, and then move this whole arrangement back that one inch. And that's going to happen like this. So I'm going to jack it up. Until the wheel is free. Put that under there. So it's not going to mess up while we're, while we're moving it around. Take the wheel off. Use this other one here and just slowly pull this back. until this edge is lined up with that one inch mark. Put the wheel back on. Let it down. I'm going to have to do the same thing on the other side. Once I move the other one back, we'll take a look at the uh, scale and see what kind of weight we've got on there. What I'm looking at right now is 32, right at 32 pounds, 32 point, well, let's call it 32, is 32.08. So if I take 32.08, and then minus the 15.80, so we've increased this to 16 pounds. So from 12 to 16, if I move that other one back an inch, we'll be pretty close to where I want. I might even just leave it right there. So let me get everything moved. I'll keep track of how far back I had to move this and I'll bring you back when I've got the somewhere around uh, 25 pounds either plus or minus 25 pounds start moving both sides around and then I'll bring you back when I get the weight that I want and I'll tell you how far I had to move it back both sides to get the weight uh, approximately what I was wanting so that didn't take long at all. Uh, I only had to make two moves. Uh, the first one you saw moving the axle back one inch 
brought it up to 32 pounds less the 15 and then I moved it back two more inches figuring uh, that that ratio that I that I saw by moving it back an inch so I moved both axles back two inches once they were in play back on the wheels no support anywhere other than the wheel and the handle paper still moves here so you know that all of the weight is on those three points so that by moving it back three inches that brought me to 42 pounds and less the what was it 15.8 that makes the weight on the handle right now at 26.2 pounds and that's right in the range it's not too much uh, to carry and it's enough weight that you have control over the mass of the uh, generator here so at this point I know where the axles need to be I can just let this down on the front use those quick clamps uh, uh, grips I guess uh, I don't know what you call them the thing to lift it up I can lift the back up put the pin in the lower position the generator will be level with the wheels off the ground then I can pull the pin on both sides pull this pin here take these off and the generator will be ready to run once a month before I put this on the ground I'm going to take two hose clamps and I will put one on either side of the one by two down here so there'll be one on this side obviously one on the other side when I take this whole arrangement off all there will be is the hose clamps when I get ready to move it hopefully the electricity doesn't go off in fact it's off right now in town um, I hope it doesn't come out this way so when I need to put everything back together to move it hopefully it won't be for a long time all I have to do is place the one by two in between the two hose clamps and I'll know that I have the correct weight on the handle and it'll be easy for me to move this around so let me get the hose clamps on get this picked up take all of the things that I've made uh, you know the quick quick there the jack stands back there this arrangement and the pieces for the front landing gear that three those three inch tubes get all those off get them painted get it reassembled and then we'll get it on the ground and I'll take it for a test drive out in the <laughs> out in the dirt and we'll see if uh, this amount of work was worth it and then uh, we'll put it back where it belongs I'll take all of this stuff off and one of the reasons I want to pull the uh, the wheels and these these adapters here off is because this came with a very nice weatherproof cover so it wouldn't fit on with with all of this on both sides so by taking this off I can use the original cover I'll bring it back when I get all of the parts painted reassembled and on the ground
So while I was waiting for paint to dry, I had a project to do that required about eh, five feet of two by two angle iron. And I didn't have one long piece, but I did have some remnants from other jobs. And as you can see, these two are of one length, these two are of one length, and this one and this one don't match any of them. So we have a longer one and they keep getting shorter and shorter as we go along. But making the whole, each of them needed three holes. So doing the holes on the end was easy. I just went in one inch, one inch in, one inch in, one inch in, one inch over here, but the center hole was going to be different on all of them. So I couldn't determine a length from an end that would work on all of these different lengths. So what I'm going to do is show you how I laid these out and was able to arrive at this center hole without doing any math whatsoever. So here I have one that hasn't been marked as of yet. And to do the ends, all I need is a block of steel Square that up, take a piece of one inch, and mark that. Just choose a point somewhere in the middle. So there I have the outer two easily found. The center one, all I did on each of the pieces was take two tape measures, bring one in from either side, and there's going to be only one place that they are equal. And on this particular length, it just happens to be right around four and a half inches, but I'm about a 32nd. So I can make a mark right there. So here is the mark that I made. Just put a square on there, line that mark up, and now I know where the center of this piece is. I hope that was a useful tip. So here we are, all assembled. Uh, before I took this upright off of the machine, uh, getting ready to paint and everything. I put two stainless steel hose clamps, one on either side, front and back. They're stainless steel, so they're going to live on the framework forever. They're gonna be in, in rain and snow and everything else, so, uh, by using the two hose clamps, I know that I'm going to be putting this bracket back in exactly the same place every time, and therefore maintaining the same amount of weight on the handle for moving it around. So 
after I got the hose hose clamps in place, I painted the uprights, the adapters that will be holding the wheels. And what took me a couple of extra days uh, putting this video out, I decided that everything that was going to stay on the generator out in the weather, I was going to nickel plate. So if you look down here, you'll see the front spacers, those three inch square tubes. Those are nickel plated. The brackets that go to the frame that uh, the jack goes through uh, and the jack itself. So this is basically the way it will be sitting the rest of its life, except if we need to use it for a, a day or two, hopefully not more than that, uh, where I can move it to where it's going to be used to put power in the house. So everything that's going to stay on the frame is nickel plated. And in that, if you would like to see uh, more on nickel plating, I put a, a video out, number one, years ago, and then got off onto, onto other stuff, so I, I dropped that. If you would like to see more nickel plating videos, how to get started, and the equipment that you need, all of that stuff, let me know down in the uh, down in the bottom there, and if I get enough response, I'll start putting out some uh, nickel plating videos. But now that we have the the brackets and the stanchions all nickel plated in place, these are in place. All I have to do is push this button, slide the wheel in, and I'm ready to go. So let me get this thing up off of the table, get the table moved back, and we'll get this down on the ground. As soon as I pick it up, I'll move the jack stands up in the upright position. When I put it on the ground, It'll be ready to move around. So, when I first got the generator put together, obviously I, I did it in the shop and I brought it down that same hill and tried to get to where it's going to be placed. With it being 60 pounds on the handle and those little bitty wheels, I just stopped just about here and went and got my tractor. So let me get this over where it's going to, going to live and I'll get you over there. So here it is. This is where it's going to live unless it's needed. But I can come out once a month, start it up, put the original cover back on, and it will be out of the weather. And the only thing that will be in the rain and the snow and such are some nickel plated feet front and rear. And when I got this out here, it, it was a breeze. I, I walked all the way from where I left you, right down at the end of the ramp, all the way to here. One shot. I'm almost 80 years old, so there, there was a little breathing involved. But other than that, uh, with the handle weighing 
26 pounds. This is great. This is one of the best modifications I've made in a long time. So thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. That'll help the algorithm and leave a comment below if, if, if this was kind of a, a, a neat project that you liked. And don't forget to let me know whether you want me to do more videos on nickel plating. So if I'm lucky, I'll see you in the next one.